Coming up here in a little bit on Chicago Bears now, Valus Jones Jr. Is he not guaranteed to be the week one kick returner? And is there a scenario where he's inactive? We'll dive into that in just a moment. My name is Harrison Graham, but first, let's talk injuries as both the Bears and the Packers have released uh, their week one injury reports. Here is Chicago's. Nate Davis, personal. We're going to talk about that. Did not practice. Mercedes Lewis, he didn't practice, but rest veteran day, so uh, no concerns for uh, Sunday. Dylan Cole did not practice with a calf issue. I think he's probably going to be out this game, but he's a backup special teamer. Not a huge loss if he's not out there. Uh, Demarcus Walker, Eddie Jackson, Jaquan Brisker, calf, ankle, groin, all full participants. So my reaction, good, some good, some bad, right? The good your three key guys on that on defense who were limited yesterday, they were full today. So they're trending toward playing, barring a setback, you know, in recovery tonight or, or in tomorrow's walkthrough. Uh, they will play on Sunday, I would have to think. Now here's the bad. Just more Nate Davis stuff where you're just like, I don't know what's going on. He did not practice. Now, he was out there. He did stretch, and you can see him right here. Uh, credit Brad Biggs with the photo of he's talking to Matt Eberflus, but you're just like, Why? Why is he not practicing? And if it's a personal issue, but he's still at the building, then what's the problem? Like, if he's there and he's healthy, shouldn't he practice? Because, and if you're asking, oh, maybe it was a veteran rest day. It wasn't labeled as that. It was labeled as personal. And Mercedes Lewis was labeled as a rest day. So it's either a typo on the Bears' part, or there's a personal issue going on, but he's still able to be at the building and he's still stretched and he fully practiced yesterday and they're not saying it's an injury. I don't know what to make of that. Like, it's been a bizarre month, month and a half, and someone tweeted at me, I don't think we should make this more than what it is. I'm not making it more than what it is, but you can't tell me it's not bizarre at this point. I mean, the guy's only had like five full practices in over a month. I mean, it's, it's very, very strange, uh, and we just don't know what's going on. That, that's the bizarre part. So, look, if he suits up Sunday and plays well, I'm not really going to give a shit what happened on a Thursday practice, but it is bizarre. It, if you're concerned, I can't blame you. How concerned are you with Nate Davis at this point? Scale of 1 to 10, 1 being you're not concerned at all, 10 being you're very concerned. Man, I'm at least at a 6 or 7. Like, I'd be foolish not to be. We haven't even seen him play. Like, I don't know, man. I just, it's it's been trending in a in a weird direction. I got no problem with people having personal days. We all have stuff come up, but he was at the facility. Like, what's the personal issue? It's just, it's an interesting one. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, Packers injury uh, report. Christian Watson still did not practice with that hamstring injury. I would have to imagine that's trending toward him not playing. We should have an official game designation by tomorrow or Saturday. Romeo Dobbs did return to practice. He was limited uh, with his hamstring injury, so uh, we'll keep tabs on that. He could be trending in the right direction. David Bakhtiari did not practice. Rast also uh, listed it with a, a knee there, but sounds like he's going to play based on uh, what he and the Packers said today. I think they're just limiting his practice work. Dontavia, uh, Dontavian Wicks, full participant today uh, after do not practicing yesterday. Rashawn Gary still limited. I think he'll play, but he'll have a limited pitch count. And then Anthony Johnson Jr., full participant. Christian Watson, definitely the one to watch. I think Dobbs probably plays, but... I think Watson's probably going to be out. I mean, hamstring did not practice the last two days. That's not trending in a good direction. FGB. 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 Get your FGB shirts right now. They won't come in for this game, but we got another game, and you can just – it's the motto here. You can rock it all season long. Chatsports.com slash FGB. Pick up a T-shirt right now. That link is in the comments and in the description. It is chatsports.com slash FGB. FGB, you know the motto, you know the drill. Pick one up today. Okay, let's talk about this kick return situation. Valus Jones, could he be an active week one? I'll give my answer in a minute, but the reason I ask this is Richard Hightower, Bear special teams coordinator, did not commit to Valus Jones as the week one kick returner, even though he's listed as the starter on the depth chart. Here's what Hightower had to say. For me to say this guy is number one, this guy is number two, this guy is number three, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that because that is what Green Bay is waiting on. Now, it's kick return. It's not like Arizona keeping quarterbacks silent. I don't think it should be like, you know, the world's best secret or something like that. But uh, he also uh, kind of uh, 
followed up with this. Uh, here's it kind of paraphrased from Zach Pearson. Uh, said that uh, Hightower wouldn't provide an answer on who would answer kicks. And this last point is the key one. He said they are still going through the 46 of 53 to be active. Because remember, on game day, 46 players are active. So they got to figure out, okay, who's active, who's in inactive, et cetera. Uh, and uh, I think wide receiver is a position that they've got to figure out who is going to be inactive. So let's kind of dive into that part of it. So at receiver, these four guys, in my opinion, are locks to be active. For sure the top three barring an injury. DJ Moore, Darnell Mooney, Chase Claypool uh, as well. Uh, Trent Taylor, I think, is a lock to be active because he's your punt returner. Like, who's going to return punts if he's not active? You, Ryan Poles told us he's the starting punt returner, so he's going to be active. So then it comes down to the other three. You've got seven receivers. Which one or two of these guys is inactive? You've got Bayless Jones Jr., who's listed as your starting kick returner, Tyler Scott, the rookie speedster out of Cincinnati, and then Equinemia St. Brown. If only one is inactive, I would make St. Brown inactive. If two are inactive, then you've got to choose between Bayless and Tyler Scott, and it's one of those deals where it's like, Bayless is this team's best kick returner, but what if Luke Getze thinks Tyler Scott offers more on offense? I'm not saying that's true or not, but if he comes to that conclusion, maybe the Bears sacrifice Bayless being a slightly better kick returner and Tyler Scott returns kicks and he's active. Those are the type of conversations that they got to work through in the building. Now, I still think Bayless is active. He's year two in this offense. He's an excellent kick returner. Tyler Scott's a rookie. You don't have to force the issue there, but... Um, if only five guys are active, you're making a choice between Bayless Jones and Tyler Scott. I think that's pretty obvious. So uh, that will be a very, very interesting t uh, decision that has to be made by this coaching staff. What say you? Will Bayless Jones be active on Sunday? Type A for active or type I for inactive? Maybe you're in the camp of, no, I don't think he will be active. I'm leaning active, but after Richard Hightower's comments today, I can't sit here and say with 100% certainty how I feel. So... A for active, I for inactive. I'll lean active, but uh, not saying it with full certainty. A little bit of news that dropped earlier today. The uh, Bears have signed offensive lineman Matt Farniak to the practice squad. Uh, maybe you've heard of him, maybe you haven't. He did play in the Big Ten at Nebraska, as you look at his background here. Uh, Seventh-round pick in 2021 uh, for the Cowboys. Uh, played in 19 games uh, over the last couple of years in Dallas. Started two last year, so he's played a little bit. Uh, and kind of like most of the Bears' interior offensive linemen, most of them, uh, he can play all three spots, both guard positions and center, so there's certainly some value there. Um, obviously, you look at the Bears' offensive line depth chart. He has that in common with Lucas Patrick, Cody Whitehair, and Dan Feeney, who could all play guard and center. So the Bears definitely have a type there. They like guys who can play multiple spots uh, on that offensive line, especially in the interior. So he offers that. I think certainly worth stashing on the practice squad right just to you know try to further develop him he was a draft pick he has played a little bit so talked to Cowboys report Tom uh, host Tom down he said hey what's the deal with Farniak and he said yeah I played a little he was decent but just a numbers game got squeezed out didn't make the roster so again for the practice squad I think there's certainly some value ideally he never plays but if he has to he's at least played a little bit before be honest have you heard of Matt Farniak before today type Y for yes or type in for no. I had heard of him, but I couldn't remember where. Then I was like, oh, okay, Cowboys. I remember them drafting him a couple of years ago. So that's where I'd heard him. What say you? Let me know in the comments. FGB. 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 You guys know the drill. Packers hate week. Bears. Packers. Sunday. Don't miss it. We're going to be live an hour and 10 minutes before kickoff at 2.15 Central Time.